Okay, we're in um, Tech Math 3 Precalculus Combined class. We're starting with 11.3 Law of Signs. Cosines. Now, look in the front cover of your book. The front cover of your book has the Law of Signs written down in case you forgot them and the Law of Cosines written down. So the Law of Cosines say if I got some triangle A, B, C, A, B, C, that uh, A squared is equal to uh, B squared plus C squared minus 2 B, C cosine A. And uh, B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2 A, C cosine B. Yeah, just put it up there. And uh, C squared is equal to um, A squared plus B squared minus 2 AB cosine C. So the key is that when you're using the law of cosines, you open the front cover of your book and you use it. You don't try to memorize these things. Uh, but clearly, there's a B here, there's a B there, there's two Bs there, and there's a capital A on the other side. Isn't that cool? Now, the only time you use the law of cosines is if you can't use the law of sines. So even if you're in the chapter using the law of cosines, you only use it once. Once you've used it, you then use the law of sines to continue the solving of the triangle. All right. So in the event that we know sine, angle, sine, side, angle, side, and nothing else, we have to use the law of cosines. If we have something that is side, 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 then we're going to have to use the law of cosines. Because in those two cases, um, when, when I say side, angle, side, I know, I know this guy, I know that guy, I know this guy. That's what side, angle, side means. Uh, in either of those cases, we have to use the law of cosines. Now, if I have a triangle where, I, where all I know is angle, 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 can that be solved? No, it can't be solved. Because I have a million, thousand, billion solutions uh, because I don't only know the angles, these are all similar triangles inside of each other, they go on forever. So if I have an angle that, I, if I have a triangle where I know the three angles and somebody tells you to, tell me the side of the, tell me the, the, side, the uh, length of the, the three sides, you may uh, you only use give them, size, give them permission to pack sand, huh? You only use the information that is given, right? Like, use the line of the sides? Yeah. Okay. So, We'll start with number two. Okay, so I've got a triangle. A, B, C. A, B, C. And I know um, 19.5 degrees. degrees. 21.5. Twelve point five feet. All right. Well, I'm stuck with using the law of sines because I have a sine angle side triangle. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to solve for a, I'm trying to solve for c, and I'm trying to solve for little b. So that's what I'm trying to get. All right. So what do you want to go for first? Um, little b. So little b squared is a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b and b is going to be the square root of a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b. Um, notice it could be plus or minus so it could be going the other way, right? It doesn't have to be going the way I think it is. Where do you get the... Yeah. How do you know that that has to be a square root? So I got B. I'm looking for B, and it's B squared in the formula. Okay, so now I'm going to just put the numbers in my calculator and write down the answer. So little b is going to be, my calculator comes on, 
square root of a, if I could see a, 21.5 squared plus c, 12.5 squared minus 2 times a, 21.5 times C, 12.5 times cosine 19.5, close parentheses, equals. All right, so B is going to be uh, 10.6 meters. Is it meters? Feet. Feet. All right, now I know that B is 10.6 feet, now I would use the law of cosine, the law of sines to solve the rest of the problem. So I've got the sine of uh, B, 19.5, divided by 10.6, is equal to the sine of A, divided by, what was A? 21.5, 21.5. So A will be the arc sine of of uh, 21.5. And that's to get A? Sine, oh. that's what it says A for. Sine 19.5 divided by 10.7. Now, um, does this guy have to hook up? No, he doesn't. So you could get a case where where it's not going to hook up, in which case you're going to get an error in your calculator when you try to calculate. 21.5 times sine 19.5 divided by 10.7 equals arc sine of the answer. 42.1 degrees. Okay, so I know now I know A is 42.1 and I know B, so now I know C, right? So 180 minus the answer minus 19.5, 118, 118. Okay. And because this is, this is section 11.3, we expect them all to work. When I get to 11.4, I'm expecting that maybe they won't. Can you slide down your paper? Please. 42 is not right? I didn't get that. What did you get? It's 0.67073. So I think it's my calculator and then stuff again. Oh, well, there seemed to be some abnormality in that calculation. Yeah. So um, I'm going to do it again. I do. I don't know what it oh, is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think your answers. They're better. It's a, it's a 10 point six. Right, right. Plus the distance. Yeah, 42.1. I get the same answer. So, uh, I think I know what it is. Uh, good. I'm glad. All right, so we're going to move down to uh, number 10. Um, 
digits. Express the lengths <laughs> of the sides to two significant digits and the angle to the nearest degree. All right, so I've got a triangle. A, B, C, and I have 60 degrees there. One, six, zero, two, three, zero. All right, well, I guess I'm going to go for a little b again. So a little b is the square root of uh, 1, 6, 0 squared plus 2, 3, 0 squared minus 2, 1, 6, 0, 2, 3, 0, uh, cosine 60. Cosine 60 is a half, so we probably won't even bother to put that in the calculator. We just put a half in there. Okay, so square root of... 160 squared plus 230 squared minus 2 times 160 times 230 times 0.5 close parentheses um, 204 oh right 204 uh, express the length of the sides to two, all right, 200. It's really 204, but they want two significant digits, so we're gonna we're gonna call B 204. Okay, so now we're gonna use the law of sines. 204 divided by sine 60 is uh, 160 sine A. A is equal to arc sine of um, 160 sine 60 divided by 204. Now I'm not going to use the 200 that I had B because that's a rounding off thing. I'm going to use the 204 before I run it. All right. Arc sine 160 times sine 60 divided by 204 close parentheses equals 55.2 okay so I get 55.2 and I round that off to the nearest thingy so I'll call it 55 all right so if 160 and one's 55, then the other guy has to be 65. Right there. One sixty times sine sixty divided by. 204. Yeah, but you have a demented calculator. Demented calculator. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe it's not that demented. I guess 42.78. 42.78. We'll call it 43. So, I was correct. 40, no, you weren't correct. <laughs> 43. 43. 180 minus 60 minus 43. 77. You make a doubt myself, What? You make a doubt myself. I can imagine. Your problem is you're trying to do it with a calculator while you're in the light. <laughs> huh? you should turn we should turn the rest of the lights off in the room and you should try it then can you just slide down a little bit like it's the 77 how do you get the 77 180 minus oh 180 minus okay. yeah it's not there okay i'm going to do number 22 next 22 <laughs> 
uh, A, B, C. One zero one degrees, twenty five minutes, thirty seconds. Six eight five point zero P five one five point zero feet. All right, well, we probably should change the degrees, minutes, and seconds into decimal degree. That's probably what we should do. But because I'm one of those type of guys, I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to say, because I know how to put degrees, minutes, and seconds in my calculator, so I'm just going to go square root of 5, 15, squared plus 685 squared minus 2, 515, 685, cosine 101, 25, 30. And then I'm just trusting myself that I can put that in my calculator all at the same time. Okay, so I'm going second function square root. 151 squared plus 685 squared minus 2 times 685 times 515 times cosine 101. Is it vector? It's not vector. Is it math? It's math, right? Math, degrees, minutes, seconds, degrees, okay. Uh, 25, math, degrees, minutes, seconds, seconds, 30, math, degrees, minutes, seconds, Math, degrees, minutes, seconds. Shit, I did it wrong again. Math, degrees, minutes, seconds, three. Okay, close parentheses, close parentheses equals. Okay, right, I've got uh, 912.38 for C. Four significant digits would mean 912.4. Well, we don't care what you got. I know, but... All right, so we're going to do it again, and we're going to change the... Um, oh, I know why. Stupid. Oh, you got it wrong? All right. Yeah. Excellent. I forgot a part of the problem. A part of the problem. All right, so now we need to now we need to find another angle. All right, so um, a divided by now um, sine a sine a divided by six eight five is equal to the sine of one o one twenty five thirty divided by what? 912.4. Okay, so A, arc sine 685 sine 101, 25, divided by 912.4. All right, I'm ready. Arc sine 685 times sine 101, math, decimal degree, degrees, 25, math, decimal degree, minutes, 30, math, 
decimal degrees, seconds, close parentheses, divided by 912.4, close parentheses again, equals. So I get an A, 47.40, degrees. Angles to the nearest second. Oh, bummer. 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 That won't do. So I got 47.4, 27.3825. Okay, so I should be able to get to the nearest seconds with that, right? So that'd be 47 degrees, and then I got 0.8. 0.38, 38, 38, 0.3825 times 60. So it'd be 29, 22, 22 minutes, 0.95 times 60. I might not have enough significant digits, 57 seconds. Okay, so that's A. Now I gotta calculate B. Okay, so I'm going to calculate B. Okay, so I'm going to take 180 minus 47, 22, 57 minus 101, 25, 30. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to call this 179 degrees, 59 minutes. 60 seconds, and I'm going to subtract from that 47 degrees, 22 minutes, 57 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to do that first. 3 minutes, 37 there, and 132 here. Then I'm going to subtract, I'm going to have to borrow again, so I'm going to rewrite my number as one three two zero one three two degrees thirty six minutes sixty three seconds and then I'm going to subtract one oh one twenty five thirty okay so I've got um, and this is for B yeah this is for B so B um, 31 degrees, 11 minutes, 33 seconds. And I don't like that answer. And the reason I don't like that answer is because I, I probably wasn't carrying enough significant digits in this number for A to be, to be that accurate. So? I'm just saying, you're just you're trying to tell me what, that you put something in your calculator and it came out with something. That doesn't tell me anything. Yeah. All right. So that looks good. All right, moving on to section 11.4. Can you go back a little bit? One second. Sorry. I'll pause there. Thank you, sir. Got it. Appreciate it. Okay, going on to 11.4. So now we have oblique triangles that we're going to try to do something with. Okay. So we'll start with number 10. Number 10. A cable, a vertical, a vertical cable television tower is shown below. It's standing on a hill that makes a degree, makes a 25 degree with the horizontal. Guide wires are attached 160 feet up the tower. What lengths of the guide of guide wires are needed to reach points 50 feet up the hill and 80 feet down the hill from the base of the tower? 
All right, so I read the I read the dumb problem. Now we got to draw it so that we have a, a prayer of getting the right answer. All right, so here's here's a 25 degree hill. On the 25 degree hill, I've got a tower that goes straight up and down, and it's going um, 160 feet straight up and down. Um, on the way up, 50 feet that way. This is feet. I have a guide wire and I want to know that length. When I when I come down the tower, I come down the tower 80 feet and I have a guide wire there and I want to know its length. So that those are the things I want to know. All right. So I don't know very much at all, yeah. and uh, so now I got I got so I got two triangles I'm going to worry about. So I'll, I'll worry about the uh, we'll call this guy the right hand triangle, and we'll call this guy the left hand triangle. All right, so I'm looking at the right hand triangle first. If I if I have 25 degrees here, and that's a right angle, then I've got 65 degrees there. 65 degrees here. Okay, so now on the right hand, the right hand triangle <laughs> looks like this. Boom, 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 65 degrees, 160, 50. And what do we want to know? We want to know that side. Okay. So the law of sine says that side, we'll call it A, A is equal to the square root of 160 squared plus 50 squared minus 2, 160 times 50 times cosine 65. So with that, we'll get the answer directly. So A is equal to square root of 160 squared plus 50 squared minus 2 times 160 times 50 times cosine 65 parentheses parentheses enter. So the right hand triangle answer is 146 feet. Okay, so come back up here. I have 146 feet for that guy. Okay, now we're going to do it again. So I've got this guy coming down. I don't, I don't have a right angle anymore, right? But I know <laughs> What do I know anyway? Do I know anything? Um, hmm. All right, if I put a construction line here, then I know that this is a right angle, this is 25 degrees, and that angle right there is 90 plus 25, which is 115. Okay, so I've got an A, I got a triangle. This is a left hand triangle. And I, I got something that looks like that. Can you go back up to that answer? I know that this is 160, this guy's 80, and this guy I forgot already. And this guy's 115. One one five, and I want to know that guy. Okay, so that guy is equal to the square root of one six zero squared plus eighty squared plus minus 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 two one six zero eighty. Cosine one one five. Okay, so the question mark is 
Oh, hang on. Square root of 160 squared 80 squared minus 2 times 160 times 80 times cosine 115 close parentheses close parentheses equals 207 feet 207 feet so I come back up here and say this guy here is 207 feet okay good enough now if I wasn't in the section of the book solving using law of cosines, that makes the problem a whole lot harder because I might look for other things to look for, right? But because I'm in the section for law of cosines, it made it very easy for me to find that. All right, let's do number uh, 20 next. <coughs> All right. Number 20. All right, so I've got a point C, and I have a point D, and they're 100 meters apart. So I know that. And then I got this point B over here, and I have this point A over here. Find the distance between the two peaks in the problem across the gorge. Point A and point B are trees on the peaks of the two hills. C is where you are standing. Okay, so I'm standing at C. Okay, so I'm standing at C. Measure a length of a 100 point to point D. The angle B C D. All right, so this angle here, that angle there is 115 degrees. C D A, so this angle over here, way to go, I missed. C D A, that angle there, 120.5. Okay, so I measured those two angles. The angle B, C, A. B, C, A. Okay, so I'm going to throw in a different guy here. I'm going to go that way. So this angle is... Um, 86.5 that way and then I'll pick another color the angle A D B so this guy here that angle 98.1 Hmm. Okay, so now I got it. Now I got a pretty picture. <laughs> and now, what do we want to do? We want to find something. Find the distance between the two peaks. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find that one. Eight point one. Is that on your right hand side? I don't know. I'd have to look in the book. 98.1. All right, so what are we going to do? I have angle, I have side. I have nothing. Um, okay. If I know the whole thing's 115, 115, then I know this little part is 115 minus 86.5. 
So I know I have 28.5 degrees on this side. Over here, I know I got 120.5, and I subtract 98.1. So I got 22.4 there. 22.4. That means that this angle over here has to be is the same as that. So 180 minus those two gives me that angle. 180 minus 28.5 minus 22.4. Okay, so I've got 129.1 sitting there. I don't see where that's going to be helpful at all, but I have it anyway. All right, so now here I got angle, side, angle. Well, that's not going to help me any. I got angle, angle, side. So I got angle, angle, side, but I already know that. Okay, I can I can calculate these two guys those two links with the law of cosines right there I'll find it okay go ahead oh, let's see what am I gonna do Okay, I'm going to calculate this purple guy first. So I'm changing my color to purple, and I'm going to calculate that guy first. All right, so that guy divided by the sine of 120.5 is equal to I need this angle. Okay, I'm going to find. I'm going to find this angle over here first. 180 minus 120.5 minus 28.5. 31 degrees. Okay, so this guy's 31. So is equal to 100 divided by the sine of 31. So uh, that implies that question mark is equal to 100 times the sine of 120.5 divided by the sine of 31. 167. 100 and 67 meters. So this guy here is 167 meters. All right, so I know him. I know him. What am I going to go for next? I should go for that. Can I get this guy? Mm, no, I can't get that guy yet. Um, but if I knew this angle, I could get that guy. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to get this guy in blue. So I'm going to change to blue. I'm looking for him. I know the big angle. I know this little angle. So I know the little angle up there. 180 minus 115 minus 22.9. 42.1, 42.1 degrees. Okay, so now I can go and say 100 divided by the sine of 42.1 equals question mark 
divided by the sine of 22.9, okay, implying that question mark is 100 times sine 22.9 divided by sine yeah, no. 42.1. Oh, I don't think so. I'm going to have to do it again. 100 times sine 22.9 divided by sine 42.1. Fifty-eight meters. Okay, so this guy's fifty-eight meters. Fifty-eight meters. Okay, so now I know this angle. I don't know that angle yet, but I know the big angle. I can find the little angle, and I got this guy and that guy. So that means I can find the red question mark. Okay, so I'm going to take one one five minus twenty-eight point five, and I'm going to get. 86.5 degrees is this angle right there. And I'm going to say that question mark, the final answer is equal to the square root of 58 squared plus 167 squared minus 2 times 58 times 167 times the cosine of 86.5. And I'm going to put it in my calculator. Square root of 58 squared plus 167 squared minus 2 times 58 times 167 times cosine 86.5, close parentheses, close parentheses, and I get 173, 173 meters is the distance between the two mountains peaks. All right, now luckily this is an even number problem, so you just have to believe me. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's good. Uh -huh. All right. So now we're in section 11 5. Now, what do you notice about the homework for 11 5? Now, why is there no homework in 11 5? Because this is, this is a method that if you're ever an eighth grade teacher and you want to teach math, you're going to use, right? But as far as the rest of us, we're probably never going to use this. Uh, but basically, what it does is says, if I have if I have vectors, those vectors add, and I can do it graphically. Okay, so that that's what it says. And uh, so I I can go and I I can add and I can subtract vectors graphically. And in our physics classes, we know we never do that graphically. We, we find the x and the y components, right? All right. So we'll do a problem, and then we'll go on home. If I can find my uh, mathematics. Um, uh, graphing. Backgrounds. See a diamond background, a grid background. Yeah, probably that one. X Y axis small. Okay, so that that guy will do, and we'll uh, why won't you let me copy paste you, you idiot thing? Anyway, so that's what we got. We got that guy there, and we'll do. Problem number uh, four 
in the uh, in the second quadrant. All right, so we'll start at some place. Okay, so we're going to start here. And uh, where's our where's our protractor? Anybody got a protractor? Um, where'd the protractor go? Interactive notebook back when we, um, general shapes measures shapes and measures um, measurements. Where's, where's the protractor? Oh, no, it's not there. What are my other options? Trig, trigonometry. Okay, there we go. Um, interactive media pages. Oh, there's a protractor. All right, so I got, I got copy. Edit, paste. All right, so I got a protractor. All right, so I'm all set. I got a protractor, and I want this guy to be rotated um, 25 degrees. All right, so I'm going to put it there. And, um, there's 20 degrees already. All right, that looks like about 25 degrees. Okay, so that looks good. And we'll go get, uh, can I write there? All right, so there's 25 degrees. And then uh, I want to go, which one am I doing, number four? I want to go 85. <laughs> 85, okay, well, how far is 85? I should probably get out a ruler, right? Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So that'd be 50, that'd be 100, 85 would be around there. It'd swing over about right there. So we'll 50, 55, 60, 65. Well, if that, what's the other guy anyway? 85? Okay, got you. We'll go fives. 25, 50, 75, 80, 75, 80, 85. So 85 is here. I'm going to swing that in an arc. Do I have a compass, I wonder? Anyway, so that's about there. Okay, so that's the first one. Now we want to go 25 at an angle of 165. Okay, so we're, we're over here. So we put our protractor there. We want to go 165. And why is it that I can't do it? I can't do it because I'm posed. Okay, so I'm going to bring it around. 165. It's about like that. Okay, so that's 165. I'm going to bring this up parallel to there, keeping the same angle. And then I'm going to come over that way like that. Okay, now this time I only want to move up 25. All right, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. That's going to be about right there. So my answer is going to be that guy. So that guy is going to be my answer. And it looks like if I brought him down, it would come down to about here. So that would be 25, uh, 50, 55, 60, 65. So we're going to say 65 knots. No, kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour. And then we want to measure this angle. So we bring our protractor back up and measure that angle. And that looks like 40 degrees. That look like 40 degrees to you? Mm -hmm. All right, so angle 40. And, and that's the way we do it. We, we construct the graph, measure it out. Uh, normally, when I did this without smart boards, I would do it with an eraser and count the eraser markings and, and guess on the angle and things like that.
Um, but but that, that's how you can do it. Now, you can also, the, the well, that's additional methods, 11 6. I, that's painted on the rear end there. But if you're going to go and do it graphically, how many significant digits do you think you're going to get? Not a, not a heck of a lot, right? So, but uh, if, if you had a, a really fine marker, you could get pretty close. So let's say I had an equation that said uh, 4 is equal to x squared over 3 plus x squared over 8 and uh, y squared over 8. I'll make that a 1 and make this a 9 and make this a um, 16. All right. So I had an equation like that. And I say y is equal to 3x plus 2. And I want to find the solution of those guys. Let's say that I don't know why I would want to do that. But let's just, just say that I wanted to do that. I could even write the problem down. Right? And uh, so I'm going to uh, copy this over to my graph. And I'm going, to, I'm going to do this using graphing methods. Okay, So we're going to do it in the first quadrant. And... Um, Edit, paste. Okay, so I recognize this guy as a uh, ellipse, and I'm going I'm to put my x y plane like that, and he's an ellipse. Uh, the x axis side is going to be three, uh, one, two, three. That's too many. Um, can I do three? Um, can't do it from there. Okay, I'll. Uh, I'll move this x-axis, move this guy down a little bit. So I move it over to there. Okay, so there is my xy. All right, so now I'm going to go and and say on the x-axis, I'm moving 1, 2, 3. So I've got a 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I got vertices in both of those places. My axis, my y-axis is going to be at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four. So that's down there. So now I've got this e ellipse that looks really weird. It looks sort of like a circle. It looks like that. Yeah, it looks more like a circle than anything else. And then I have y is equal to three x plus two. So that means the y intercept is at two, one. 2 and 3x means I go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1. So now I've got a thing that looks like that. And now I've got a solution there and there. And I've solved two equations, two unknowns in graphing ways. Uh, and I say, well, what, what's this point? Well, this point's um, hmm, that's 1, so that's uh, 0.3, 1, 2, 3, uh, 3.9. And this point over here, so that would be my x and y answers. And I'd do the same thing on the other way, I'd find it the other way. So y you can use graphing methods to get more difficult solutions to things if you wanted to. Okay, enough? Yes. Yes? Control, all right.